Dime Dropper fam, what is up? Vlog number 24 on the season, and with this vlog and this game, I've officially gone to more games this season than any season in my life. 24 games, it's a blessing, and it's the last season in Staples Center, so I don't know, that's really cool for someone like me. I wouldn't have thought that the game, the season I've went to the most games would be the season, the last one at Staples Center. So for a kid like me who grew up going to games in Staples Center and fell in love with watching NBA games live there, it's pretty cool. Today we got the Philadelphia 76ers. Of course, there's no Joel Embiid, but we saw them last year and they smoked us with James Harden and Joel Embiid. But today they'll be shorthanded. It's a special game because Nicholas Batum is coming back to Staples Center to the Clipper game for the first time since obviously the James Harden trade. He will be greeted very warmly. And I already know I'm gonna give him a standing ovation. With the rest of 207, I got my Batum shirt on. Nico, thank you so much for everything that you did. Uh, it was sad to lose you. And let's go get a win. Let's make it three in a row. Continue this last stretch of the season where we're going to close the season strong going into the playoffs. Another one of those Sunday matinee games. Can't get enough of them, right? But this will be one of the last ones we ever have. So let's go. There were a lot of Sixers fans last year, but there's even more right now. I'll show you in a sec. A lot. A lot. Sixers, all Sixers fans. Sus. <laughs> Let's get it. So many Sixers fans, man. I'm gonna get a heart attack. It's 12:30 on a Sunday. All right. It wasn't. It's not as bad as I thought. They're just all over there.
So apparently it's a Facebook group or some group called Fly the Process. All next to us. They're hitting every three. Every three. Sixers shooting seven for nine from three. So many contested ones too. We gotta do a better job guarding, but hopefully they cool down. Clearly they're running Kawhi off the line. We'll see. James Harden leading the way. Almost with a double-double. Foul assessed number 14, Terrence Mann. Oh, come on. Don't drown us out, you assholes. All right, Miranda, halftime. Give me your thoughts on Nico Batum's video tribute. They made it three players in one. Yeah. How do you feel? You know what? Batum Battalion is, is pissed because I think that Nico should have his own video, but the fact that they put like Rocco, KJ, and Nico in one, not fair. He, I love Batum, was always a ride or die for Nico, and I think they should have gone harder for him. Pissed. How do, you, how do you feel about the game right now, though? We were down 17 points, but now we cut it down to seven. Uh, that, I wanted to cut it down to five and a half, so the fact that it got it down to seven, happy as fuck. So. You think we can still come out with the win here? Absolutely, of course. And last question, how do you feel about the Sixers uh, traveling group that has come sat around us? I'm shocked. It's like both sides of us. Like, what the hell? You can't even like, hear our section right now. So yeah, it's crazy, but good for them, I guess. To a better second half. Yes. <laughs> This a video. All right, guys, so seven point game at the half. It was a really rough half for most of it. What do you guys think? I already asked her her thoughts, but what do you guys, what about you, Spence? And uh, we got to come out aggressive next half. That leg is a little more sensitive. You got to close it, hold it a little closer. Okay. You got to come out harder next half. Uh, a little more, more urgency. I, what I see right now is we giving them too much space to shoot these threes. Yep. So we got to get a little bit closer, not give them six feet like they giving us. That's it. So what do you guys think about the Nico Batum video tribute? Them putting them all three players into one. It was very short. It didn't even take up the whole time out. Did it? Who? I didn't see Rocco. Was he here? He's not here, doesn't look like. But so, they put all three of them together. Do you yeah. think that was, I mean, should KJ Martin have gone to share tribute with no, Nico? No, I don't think, I think Nico should have got his own. Nico was with us for a long time. We built a relationship with him. We really didn't get to build a relationship with Kenyon, but Nico for sure. Rocco, but Nico for sure. That yeah. was my boy. Talk about Nico's contributions to Clipper. How much does he mean to the fan base, Spence? Man, let, let's just go straight to the playoffs. You know, he had a lot of great shots defensively uh, and also humble. You know, he played for the G League for a little bit, mm -hmm. put out some gems for the young guys, and I feel like a lot of vets should, you know, honestly go to the G League and mentor some of those guys, you know, so. so are we gonna come back, are we, are we gonna come back in this game and how are we gonna do it? Intensity on defense, yeah. that's where it starts. Uh, yep. We need to shut down their three-pointers, that's what we need to do. That's where they get those extra points from. What do you guys think about the Sixers fans? There's a whole Facebook group thing that organized the whole trip out here in the 200 section. I am like blown away with that. I was like, why are they so loud today? It's organized crime. <laughs> Definitely organized crime. They, they showed up, they showed up. We coming hey, back though, guys? Yeah, everybody on my uh, Los Angeles Clippers Booster Club, Join up. We bringing a thousand up in here. Oh, that's right. Defense! They're gonna come back and Harden with a double double leading Defense! the way. Defense! 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 
is going on? Who's running the asylum? Oh, you're right. Yeah, we're going to probably lose with this fucking defensive effort that we have. Very, very disappointing. Outside Staples Center where the Clippers have returned home and returned to losing ways with the 20 point beat down to the Embiid-less, Lowry-less, Batum didn't even play less 76ers, Mason. How are we feeling? Well, on one hand, it was pretty even most of the game. So I can give him that. However, with that said, I mean, we need to talk about Mason Plumley. We, like, what is he doing? What, what is he doing? Just terrible. And then also, Paul George had a kind of one of his stinker games, and everyone else kind of wasn't that remarkable. Like they, they didn't do enough. I will say, very small consolation prize. The third unit looked marginally better than they did last night. Like and I so know small, that, that is not so a small con really that prize. you know huge, but you know they played they played much better tonight than they did against the Blazers, so I can at least say that. But we need to talk about Mason Plumley, man. What do you have to say about him? I mean, we played Tice in the first half, then went with Mason in the second half. We've seen Ty do this over the last couple of games. 
do you want us to stop playing Plumley entirely? Yes. I think that we need to go with Tice full time as the backup center because, I mean, Plumley has not been the same since that injury. Like before that injury, he was playing. He was playing decent. You know, he was giving us the con fairly consistent play. Even he gave us last year, but since then, he's just not been the same player. Like, sure, he's gotten some decent stuff out of the rim, but his passing has been atrocious. Like, there, there are at least like four turnovers in that game that were because of his mistakes, at minimum, that I can just think of off the top of my head. We need, we need to start really thinking about get it offloading Plumley. Like I think like he's probably the first one on the chopping block in the offseason. Last question, 12 games left. We don't look like a good team right now. What's the problem? Well, I feel like we had a very good rotation and then we're going away from it. Also not having Russ for a, quite a bit of it. Um, not good. And then Norm, uh, he had he had that injury that he just came back from and so had 20 points today though. He did 20 points. Like that's good. You know, he you know, he's got to – everyone's got to be back to the swing of things. By the way, I want to use this as an opportunity. Uh, Ricky Sanchez, if you're watching this, uh, you officially become the second person in history to be officially declared an enemy of the wall. So congratulations on that. And we're, we're on it. We honor our enemies. So there you go. Appreciate you, Mason. We'll be back here tomorrow night. Are you going to be here? Oh, yeah. Outside Staples Center where the Clippers have just taken a beat down to the shorthanded 76ers. Jay, that went wrong real quickly in the fourth quarter. Real quickly, R real quickly, both in the fourth and in the beginning. Right. I think our main problem, to be honest, is just starting games. I mean, we're terrible on the inside glass. Um, I think I saw Mo Bamba had six rebounds, six or seven rebounds in the first couple minutes of the game. Like, we just start off flat, and I know we're a great team, but we can't just keep doing that to ourselves over and over again. These 12:30 games don't help, but at some point you just got to say like, "Fuck it, we gotta, we just gotta play st strong to start." Uh, I liked what I saw from Harden in the first half, but he kind of disappeared after. Right. Um, and it was just a game of runs. There were times where we could turn it on, and then there were other times where nah. it just all went wrong. Any thoughts on the fact that Kawhi didn't get back in the game in the? fourth quarter we didn't get zoo back in the game in the fourth quarter we just kind of waved the white flag with like six minutes left do you like that decision considering we have a game tomorrow night against indiana or should we have gone a little harder forward in the fourth i don't hate the decision but i agree i feel like Kawhi and zoo should have gotten in a little a little bit more um but i get it we're an older team i mean i know zoo's not the oldest player in the world but you know we we gotta we gotta stay ready for tomorrow i i don't hate it if we win tomorrow is it not a big deal i think so all right, then. Are you coming tomorrow? No, I'm not. I got school tomorrow. All right, we'll see you soon, then. Thank you, Jay. Outside Staples Center, where the Clippers have just taken a brutal L to the shorthanded Philadelphia 76ers. It felt like we were going to get a three-game winning streak going DL2, but it was not to happen. Yeah, yeah it was a pr pretty awful game. Um, it, it felt bad, mostly just because 207, the Clippers fan section was flanked by 206 and 208, which was just full of, full, full of Philly fans, but excuse me. Uh, but they got flown out by some podcast host, apparently. So that's what they have to do to, to, to try and mess with us. Um, so, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it on the chin. Pause. Um, and, and it's just a, a great feeling to know that, you know, someone out there hates us enough to spend a lot of money to get people in the building to hate on us in real life. Well, it's probably less money to spend on us than some other teams, to be honest. Well, but yeah, probably. I mean, I mean flying into LAX is no joke, unless they flew in Ontario, True. Which, which they probably did. I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, but, you know, close game. I, I think we, we had it tied at a, a couple of different points. I don't think we ever took a lead of, of any kind, even by one point. Um, so that didn't really feel great. Um, but it does feel encouraging that we're able to hang in there, that the vibes still feel a little bit right. The Sixers just, you know, had it out for us, and this was a hell of a revenge game for them. We only have 12 games left. We're struggling immensely right now. What's the problem, and how can we turn this around? And do you think we can turn it around? Um, well, I always think we can turn it around. Do I expect that we will, you know, soon? No, uh, I, I think tomorrow night is going to be just as tough as today, if not worse. Um, I say this every time. I don't want to blame a, mat a matinee game, but, you know, it does feel a little bit odd. The play does feel a little bit odd, and I fully expect that tomorrow night will look a little bit better. Last question. Tomorrow, are you going to be here? Yeah, 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 I'll be here. 
and you feel good about it? Um, I, I feel better about tomorrow than today uh, just because we played against the Pacers before. It looked pretty good. I, I expect guys to lock in. Um, I expect Zoo to lock in because the last time we played them here, um, I think was that 31-29 game, unless that was last season. I, I, I can't even remember. That was, yeah, that was. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting the best. I, I know they've added Siakam, but they've also lost a couple of guys. Um, PG's best friends with Ty Halliburton, so maybe he'll lock in against them. Uh, maybe the reason we lost today is because he doesn't have any buddies on the Sixers. You know, maybe PG just... What about Nico? Speaking of Nico, Nico. The video, the video tribute was shared among three guys, Roko, KJ, and Nico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about that, given that Nico is just a much bigger clipper than those other two? Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, a nice shirt. Shout out to Nico. Um, but, you know... Um, I didn't see the video tribute. I was actually late. So I didn't miss line. anything. It was literally 30. It was it was like Reggie Jackson's basically. Really? Okay. So like mad short and it was split between three people. So that's like five seconds of screen time for each. But, you know, I love it to him. He, he was a solid vibes guy for us. Um, you know, perfect glue guy. Always made the right play. Solid power forward. I wish I would have gotten to see him play today. Um, but, you know, there's always next time. I think we play in Philly, you know, in, in a couple of days or like next week. Harden's going to get crushed in that yeah, game. Like I, I, I would I would give everything to be at that game and just feel that vibe. Because if it's anything like, you know, 206 and 28 was given us today, you know, James Harden's going to have to talk to a therapist that weekend. Man. Appreciate you, DL2. See you tomorrow. Outside Staples Center where the Clippers have just taken a brutal L to the shorthanded 76ers. Joined by some Philly fans that were here, part of the. Oh, right, Ricky Sanchez. Okay, so Ricky Sanchez. I was gonna. Look. Let me ask you guys first. Tell me about the whole event that brought everybody here. Everybody was in the 200 section. Go ahead. Yeah, so we do a, a away game every year for Rice to Ricky Sanchez, baby. Let's go. The only Sixers podcast. And this year we came on to, uh, you know, not boo, but not cheer, James Harden because. You know, we all know the history. Right. Yes, and we have a little event beforehand, and we all got together. Some of us also went to the Lakers game. Not as good a win as this one. Are you guys from Philly originally? Yes, of course. Yeah, we yep. live there now. We, we flew here. here. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. So this event is called Fly the Process. Okay. Every year. So let me know about how you're feeling about this season. Obviously, Embiid was having an MVP caliber season yet again, goes down. Is there optimism that he can return and make a run? Because personally, I really liked your roster before Embiid got hurt because you got a lot of ex-Clippers, Tobias Harris, Nicholas Batum, Marcus Morris, and Robert Covington, all yes. former Clipper players. And KJ Martin as well. And KJ no? Martin, but very, yeah. very brief time. Oh, you know. He should not, by the way, I'm very disappointed in the Clippers organization for not giving Nicholas Batum his own tribute oh. for at least a minute. That was right. garbage. Right. We love him. Yeah, Look at this. Of, yeah. I really, and we why didn't Nick he Batum. play tonight, though? I was going to ask you guys the same thing. We love Nick Batum. Sorry, what was the question? Why didn't he play? Yeah. Uh, I think he's been hurt lot, like recently. Okay. Or he's just an old ass man and he needs rest. Let's, before we guys we go, by the way, yeah. let me ask you guys about Harden. So I'm before he got to the Clippers, I was one of the biggest James Harden haters in the world. Nothing personal. I just don't like the way he plays basketball. He's done a great job for us, but he's really slowed down of Get late. Ready for the playoffs. I was gonna say. All, I it's, to say. Yeah. all I'm gonna he's say. He's gonna choke just like he does every single year. I he's was gonna blame his teammates. Yes, I was all on the James Harden train all season. I literally bought hats, I bought his wine, and then he, he let hats. me down. She bought See, the red I've, I've never even I've never even been on board the train. I've always had one foot in, one foot out, or should I say, one foot kicking his ass out. But <laughs> but I'm just I just I'm nervous about the guy. You know, he has a playoff history. I've followed him his whole career. I think it's gonna happen I again. Mean, these are classic. Today was a classic James Harden game. What, 13 points, 14 assists, in a fucking loss to the shorthanded Sixers, like you were saying. I mean, to answer your question about how we feel about the Sixers season this year, so yes, and B started off with another MVP caliber season, and he was gonna he was gonna get that MVP again until he went down. But the rest of the Sixers, you know, stepped up. Maxi wasn't the best game, big Toby game. You know, Kelly Oubre, we love him. Best looking six, best looking player in the NBA. Campaign went off. Campaign went off, and we traded him for uh, what the hell is his name? Uh, we're, we're losing the audience here. Yeah, well, you know. And last question: How far are the Sixers going? Oh, second round, baby, of course. And then losing again? <laughs> oh, of course, just like last six years. Appreciate you. Get them safe, guys. Outside Staples Center, where the Clippers have just gotten crushed against the shorthanded 76ers. This was brutal. You know, I felt like we could get three wins in a row. 
coming off those games against Portland, I was hoping it wasn't just beating a bad team. It was building some momentum and building good habits again, but it was to no avail. I mean, first quarter, we're already getting smoked. We had first half Tobias Harris. Every Clipper fan is super familiar with first half Tobias. And he went quiet in the second half, just like we always expected him to. But we just could not get consistent stops throughout the game. The only stretch we did was like the third quarter. We sent Zoo to the level of the screen, got burned by threes. They were hitting everything. Campaign had 20 plus points tonight off the bench. And then we went drop coverage in the second half. And Zoo still, I mean, I'm not trying to blame Zoo, but he had trouble regardless. But whoever was guarding the ball, I mean, how many guys could you say on this team played good defense in this game? You know, I can't remember the last time I've said Terrence Mann had a great defensive game. Kawhi Leonard doesn't guard the ball enough because teams aren't going to go at him and they're not going to put him on the best players due to, you know, preserving his body. I thought PG had some good defensive moments, but he's not guarding the ball enough. And our rotations are just a little slow. I thought Philly was very physical with us. They made sure they were doubling Kawhi and, and running him off the three-point line. And I checked at one point in the game, James Harden and Kawhi were a combined one for 11 from three. So they got plenty of good looks. Kawhi missed a lot of shots he normally makes. But the fact is we were only down by five going into the fourth. I thought we were gonna come back that the momentum was swinging in our direction. And then Paul George and Harden in that unit shot the bed. And you know, my boys talked about it just now. We did the whole Tice first half, Mason second half thing. And I'm assuming it's because Tice missed some layups, but Mason came in and just shat the bed. I mean, turnovers. That one in the backcourt that led to a maxi three was, was terrible. And we ended up losing by 11, or going down by 11 at that point. And that's when I felt like the momentum had shifted. And we didn't bring Kawhi back in the game. I couldn't believe we didn't bring Kawhi back in. We didn't bring Zoo back in. And we waved the white flag with six minutes left. We have a back-to-back -back tomorrow. I get it, but what kind of message are you sending? We're giving up another L. We can't get the best C uh, record in Clipper history anymore. So unless this team makes the conference finals, they do not have a claim for the best team in Clipper history anymore. I don't give a fuck about that stretch in December and January. That was great. We are not going to finish with a better record than the 2014 Clippers. And if we we have to win out to finish with a better, as good of a record as the 2013 and 15 Clippers. It's very disappointing. We look old. We look slow. Harden, Paul, George, and Kawhi need to be better. I don't know how we didn't pass it to Amir Coffey several times when he was open. We're going to need better from our role players. We miss Russ. The bright side is Norman Powell played well, but defense is not good. Like, it's we need to defend. We need to do a better job. I thought Harden did well in the first half, but second half he was whatever. And just if Kawhi's out of the game for five minutes, we can't just collapse like that. Paul, George, and James Harden have to do better. Mason should not play rotation minutes anymore. And we chose not to play Bones Highland. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes there, but we don't look like a good team right now. We got 12 games left and we do not look like a good team. There's no other way to put it. I'll be there tomorrow though, where you can hopefully get back on track. Peace, hope you all enjoyed the video. The Sixers fans came out in droves tonight because of that group that we mentioned earlier and they got their win and you know, they were good. Maxi was great. Paul Reed was great. All these guys were good. They outplayed us, they deserve the win. We gotta be better, simple as that. Peace, have a great day.